Hello everyone. Welcome back to the new episode of today's Workflows Flywheeler. In this episode, we're going to focus about in a particular topic, which is really important. Why? Because this is why the company become more successful and more profitable in the way too. So the P factor is about starting with building connections. Yes. So today in the episode, we'll be focusing about how do we build great connections in the workforce that can make a great impact for the company. And today with me, um, I ha we have a guest, which is very close friend of me. We've been doing for so many exciting things for so many years, and it's one and only my friend, Pedro Vilaca. Uh, hello, Pedro. Welcome hello, to the John. today's episode. Nice to be together with you again. It's always a great, great pleasure to, uh, to do these interactions and to be able to share my experience with you and with the audience. Glad to have you too as well. Um, Pedro doing a lot of things. I just want to share that Pedro was doing building his caddy in Simeon's Healthy Center and he moved off to become a general manager roles and was running a lot of exciting experience he has. But right now he's doing a lot of interesting things too as well too. So I would like to invite Pedro to share like for the audience in two minutes, what are the key things you're focusing? Very, very quickly. I have been uh, working in healthcare, uh, med techs all, all my life. I was, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, uh, John, a very, very long term uh, Siemens Health Engineers employee. Then I decided after my uh, Vietnam journey to leave the company to try different things. Uh, and now uh, I'm running a company that is expanding in Africa. So basically, uh, uh, I'm developing a company to distribute, uh, among other laboratory operations, also the imaging operations in three different countries in Africa with uh, the vision to expand to be a big, big distributor in more countries in Africa. This is a great experience because I had previously worked in Europe, I worked in Latin America, I worked in Southeast Asia. So this is something that is complementary my career. Now work in Africa, which is a completely different business environment. So uh, I had been there since more than one year, running the company, very challenging. Uh, we are talking about countries with many, many uh, barriers, many difficulties, but also a very interesting and very challenging situations. And I believe that we are really not only uh, contributing to running the business, to increase the business, but also with a direct impact in population. Once we are operating a medical device, we are operating, a, for instance, laboratory operation with a rapid tests, uh, all of these uh, uh, all of this methodology to do diagnostics, so really with a great, great impact in the population. So that is great and is uh, really something quite interesting. Fantastic. And um, that sounds like a lot of exciting things happening in Africa. We probably should talk in other episodes about how is the cultural barrier working in Africa and, and Europe and, and also in South Asia and Asia too, because you have so many experience in this spectrum too. Let's save it for another conversation. I think a lot to uh, discuss about this one. So let's dive into today's um, our main topics. So let me just break this ice so with this thing is about the company sometimes don't know that connection is important and sometimes even knowing the failing to implement a great connection because nowadays the information and knowledge is quite quite commodities available everywhere but still a uh, company making mistakes. So in your perspective Pedro what are the five mistakes companies making uh, in terms of building great connections among their workforce or employees? Uh, first, first of all, I don't know if they do five, but definitely they do some uh, some great uh, critical mistakes. I may say that normally companies try to understand this uh, thing of the connections. Uh, they still believe that they can fix everything with just some internal media, social media tools. And they really do not think about what is the nature of the connections because connections is not only to have the tools to be connected but it's much more than that is to create a culture of collaborative uh, approach to the work which means that typically first of all they try to put uh, in place some tool uh, in many circumstances and i have the personal experience that, that they choose tools that are even not uh, the more com more common and more no uh, known uh, tools uh, which means that immediately they do the first mistake 
because they create barriers to the adoption. Uh, everybody is able to adopt, uh, to give an example, WhatsApp chat or WhatsApp group. Not everybody is able to adapt a specific uh, not known tool. Okay. And the first thing that they also do, uh, and I will give a, a, a very well uh, known example, even when they force people to start talking uh, in Teams chat instead of uh, WhatsApp, instead of the creating a proper uh, collaborative uh, cultural uh, tool uh, and approach to the process, they create a barrier because people are used to talk in the different ways and suddenly they are being forced, and I leave this my, myself, to use tools that they don't, uh, they are not familiar and they don't, don't like the tools, okay? So, first, uh, first and to be um, resume the situation, they should uh, choose carefully what they want to use for this collaboration. Not uh, what is more obvious. If the company has already some culture of sharing, probably they should not force a different tool or a different process. They should adapt what is already in place. This is the first thing that I believe uh, companies need to take uh, in consideration. Additionally, and also, uh, also I lived in myself this situation, suddenly they move from the use of the mo of mobile phone connection, email connection to uh, just start sharing everything. And I will give again the example of Teams folders. And you move from a situation that you don't have any collaborative approach to the work to a situation that you have too many collaboration, which means that suddenly you have 100 folders you are not able to find anything more properly uh, uh, or a, a very well-known example is the same situation when you start to having 100 uh, groups of uh, WhatsApp uh, and you are there. So suddenly it's too much. Okay. And this is very common uh, inside the company. So they do this mistake and they don't stop to think about what is the nature of the collaboration. Collaboration is not about the tools itself. It's about the process. It's about the mindset. It's about uh, how the people really understand that they need to work together in a proper uh, and smooth way. Thank you, Pedro, for sharing this aspect too. So from my side, um, yeah, very much I agree with the, the mention you mentioned. From my side is, number one, I will say is about lack of communication. But it doesn't mean that lack of just communication is a lack of effectiveness of the communication. So company wants to do a lot of communication and and sometimes they are so much tool driven and they think the tool will get it done for them and then it doesn't work. And now another mistake they're doing is about the, the thing that the tool is already there and now they're just doing a campaign of telling everyone in email and telling them just come to the, the platform and then it's not working too. And then also not inclusive as well too. And there's only few people are participating and not encouraging the other people too. So that's why my number one is about lack of communication, which you mentioned as well to Pedro. So number two, I would say inefficient or ineffective team building. A lot of companies has a budget to do team building. Many of them doesn't spend because they think that this is the way you can set the budget. Some of them, they do it, but they do it in a really efficient or inefficient way. So they do team building activity, just going out, watch a movie, eating dinner and leave. There is no actually bonding things happening. They're just spending time um, to go home. How many times I hear it that companies, employees say this one, oh, it was such a boring team building, just eat and leave. We just want to go home. So that means you are not interesting enough. It's not connecting enough and it's not inclusive enough too. So that's the number two. Number three, I will say is about ignoring diversity and inclusion. Uh, I think that's a very much part of number one. So different people like to be included and 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 enjoy the conversation in a different way because of the per personality. Some are introvert, some are extrovert. So that's, that strategy is often missing when you talk about connection and building, building um, employee um, connections. Number four, I would say there's a lack of recognition and appreciation too. The way company choose to recognize and, and share the appreciation is different. And there is often like not efficient way people like to get recognized or, or appreciation. Sometimes this recognition and appreciation is so hidden that nobody knows that they have got it and not been well communicated in a right way too. And sometimes it's given to the wrong people that also create another layer of problem as well. And the last one I will say is this one, um, innovate opportunity of collaborations. And um, a lot of companies are working from home and working in, in distributed teams or, or global team too. So the, often the manager is the one should be the key facilitator to build those connections to the, to the team. 
and it's often they are not trained enough it's not their fault the just company just simply did not train them with about the new environment how to stay connected with a global team or the distributed team too so these are the five things i have seen in my observation um when we talk about the commonly mistakes about building uh employee um connectedness there is one aspect that i want to reinforce uh, and you mentioned in your number 3 if i'm not wrong sure. uh, is is about inclusion because in fact if you customize a session of putting people together doing something some external activity whatever you always uh, realize if you observe a little bit that there are always people that are outside that they are the, the activities that are requested are not natural to them some of right. them will like it some of them will hate it and if we don't take in consideration and it's quite common that companies do not take this in consideration what's supposed to be an inclusion uh, interesting uh, uh, an empowerment tool becomes a sacrifice for part of the employees and this part is not a minor part sometimes it's really relevant because a lot of people do not want to have the lead do not want it to be exposed uh, and then they, they never count on that which means that is really really uh, uh, against instead of being contributing to what is the main object by right. it go counterproductive yes yes <laughs> um absolutely uh thank you uh pedro for reinforcing that point